Hi Libra, I'm Pam and welcome to your Psychic Tarot reading for October 2019. This month I'm using the Hanson Roberts Tarot deck and remember these are general readings and to get messages pertaining specifically for you, you would need a private reading. This recording is for Libra Sun, Libra Ascendant, and Libra Moon. Please be sure to watch your rising sign and your moon sign because some months they're going to resonate more for you than your sun sign will. And watch the cusp sign if you're born on the Virgo Libra cusp. You might want to watch Virgo. Or if you are born on the Libra Scorpio cusp, you might want to watch Scorpio. I've been getting emails and comments uh, from people for the past like three months saying that if they found their if they were born on that transition date from one sign to the next and their what they considered their sun sign wasn't making sense to them and they watched the other sign their messages were coming to them from there so you might want to check that out and also i want to wish the libras happy birthday i hope you have a fantastic solar return and a great great birthday and birthday year so all that being said libra now on to your October 2019 Psychic Tarot reading. First card you have is Eight of Cups, and this is turning away and, uh, from what's not working for you anymore, emotionally speaking, and heading off in a new direction with the stick of power and control in your hand, even though the journey is unknown. I do feel like you're thinking about um, things where you want to feel better from people that have disrespected you, insulted you, or pushed your buttons. I feel like you want to move on. You want to heal from that energy. Um, and you want to move away from it. And you may have felt, Libra, like, I put everything out there and I get nothing back. Like, Maybe you feel like you're very loving and giving, and maybe you are, but that other people just ignore it, turn a blind eye to it, don't appreciate it, uh, don't acknowledge it. And I feel like it's insulting to you because I do feel, even if you have any insecurities, I do feel that you do have a strong sense of self-esteem and that in some regards, you may feel like these people are lucky I'm in their life or they're lucky I'm associating with them or they're benefiting and lucky from what I do or have to contribute to their lives, to this or that, to the workplace, to the home life, to the love relationship or who, whatever area this is. And you may feel like, again, I'm going to repeat myself, you may be feel uh, feeling disrespected, unappreciated. And I feel like some of you are, are thinking about how can I get out of that head space, that mind space? I feel that some of you uh, may feel trapped. When I was shuffling the cards, the eight of uh, swords came up, but I shuffle the cards and shuffle them and then I cut the deck in three piles. I put them back together and then I lay five cards out. But that eight of swords did come out and eight of swords is being trapped in an emotional prison and not seeing how to get out of it. But in your reading, when I pulled the cards, here you're turning away from what's not working for you anymore, emotionally speaking. And you may be seeking uh, something that's going to either a love relationship or a new career or a new job or something that's then going to make you feel more complete and fulfilled. You may also have felt like every time you inch your way out of something, you get pulled or drawn or sucked back in. This could be happening. A love partner could be doing this to you or like, or if it's an unhealthy relationship of some other sort, family or a friendship, you might be like, okay, I'm inching myself out. I'm inching myself away from it. I'm separating myself. But then they call you or they cry on your shoulder or they do something that kind of reels you back in. I feel like that's why you have ended up, why that trapped card came up for you. But here you're turning away from it and walking away. And I feel like you're going to be searching for emotional release. 
maybe some of you are going to think of talking to a spiritual counselor or, or advisor or joining a gym and going and doing some kind of exercise or getting involved in uh, a classes for yoga or some uh, or martial arts or some kind of something that can help bring you emotional release. You have the Six of Swords next. Here you've got another movement card. Here you're turning away from what's not working for you anymore. And this is a card of moving. So this could be moving to uh, better shores. It could also be um, literally moving your home. It could be moving from troubled shores to better shores. It could be moving your residence. It can be long distance travel. Um, it could be having to commute for work, like taking a new route or having more commuting or traveling to do with work. I really do feel that there is something you want to get out of. And I hear you saying, I don't want to do this anymore. And I feel like you feel like you need to have uh, yourself on firmer and more solid ground and firmer footing. Maybe you're living in a place that tends to have a lot of storms or there's been some natural disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever. And you're like, I need to move to the mainland. I need to get off this island or I need to get off of this peninsula or I need to get away from this coast and move to because I'm hearing moving to firmer footing. And if it's not literally moving to firmer footing in a sense of like where you live, which I feel for many of you it is, um, it could also be maybe you don't feel like your job is secure or your love relationship is too like all over the place and you don't feel that secure and you want more of a sense of firmer footing, like not that things are so changeable, prone to uh, a state of flux. Like I get you want uh, more solidness and firmer footing. I feel if you are going to move, 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 like move your residence, I feel many of you will actually do that in January of 2020. Some of you could do it now, but I feel January is a likely time. Some of you may also feel like I'm jumping out of my skin. I can't keep seeing the same scenes and doing the same things over and over and over again. I want to get out of here and I need to move like to travel, to see new sites. That energy is also around you too. So you've got like wanting to break out of a prison here or stagnation and also not wanting to be dealing with the same feelings of disrespect, unappreciativeness, um, or whatever is making you feel trapped is, is really coming up between these two cards, eight of cups and six of swords. Uh, sometimes these cards seem intertwined to me in a, in a five card spread on, uh, on a general reading and sometimes not, but your two definitely are connected here. I also feel like the sense of you taking a chance and taking a gamble or a risk is really high this month. And I wonder if it's because some of you, it's your birthday month. Uh, maybe that's giving you like this inner like courage to like, well, I'm throwing caution to the wind. I'm taking a risk or a gamble, but that also is coming up here. You have the four of pentacles next. This is uh, the miser card. This is holding on protectively to your finances or pr holding on protectively to anything of value. It could even be holding on protectively to emotions. It can also mean financial success coming to you in the future. This is a time for you to hide some money away and keep some things to yourself about what you're doing. If you're coupled and you're planning on leaving, I feel you're going to hide money or take some money away. And I'm going to stick with hide. I, I feel or putting money in a more safe and secure manner. If you're not hiding it from a loved one, it could be you want to buy a safe or you want to get a safety deposit box or you want to do, um, uh, what's that called? Uh, protection on your money that you can book. Uh, I forget, life lock, that kind of thing. Although I had somebody years ago write me on the channel and say, 
that that's BS, that that doesn't really work. I don't know, but you could be taking steps to try to protect your money or hide your money. This is coming from insecurity and lack of faith in something that's going on. Either you feel like the stock market's going to crash or you feel like your spouse is going to take off uh, or you feel like there's somebody that may be uh, connected to you, a business partner or a love relationship that's stealing money from you or may do so. Um, but it's like your insecurity and lack of faith in someone or it could be in a, in a job situation, you might be like, well, I don't think that this job, this company is going to last. I, I don't know, but I get like, this is like hiding money, protecting and hiding money, which doesn't always come up to me with this card, but for you for October, it is. And I also feel like I hear you thinking if I leave this out in the open or I leave this dangling, everybody's going to know what's going on. And I don't want them, whoever them is, to know what I'm doing or what's going on with my finances or what's going on with money. You may have family members that you're like, may not even be your love partner. It could be like siblings or other people uh, in your family that you're like, I don't want them to know what's going on with my, with my finances or money. But somehow you feel like right now or prior to October, that something was like left open or dangling that people could see it or would be able to know it too easily. Some of you may think of chopping your property in half and either renting half of it and living in the other half, or you could be doing something where you're dividing a property up for sale. Maybe you had an estate, settled an estate, and now the estate needs to be settled and the property like gets sold and it has to be divided or somebody in the family wants to buy, buy it and then you're dividing up what the person paid for the property, like that kind of thing. Like chopping a property up, dividing a property uh, comes up. And for some of you, like I said, it could be a residence or a property. Maybe you're buying a place and you're going to have it be people live on one side, people live on the other. That's possible here too. You have the Knight of Rods next, and this is a fire sign person. This is either Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. Sun sign, rising sign, or moon sign. Could also be you, Libra, if you have a rising sign or moon sign. That is a fire sign. So there's a lot of comings and goings with this Knight of Rods. You're dealing with them this month. You're, there's a lot of them going back and forth. Uh, they could be traveling, uh, you could be connected to them with the travel, or they could be coming in and out of your life or in and out of your home. But I get a lot of back and forth. The Knight of Rods is there. The Knight of Rods isn't there. The Knight of Rods is there. The Knight of Rods is in there. If you, if this is your rising sign or your moon sign, it could indicate you're traveling, you're in and out of your home. It could be your love partner is traveling and they're in and out of your home. It could be one of your kids and they're with someone, then they leave and they come live with you or they or they're at school and they come live with you and then they go out and go back to the school. I don't know, but you got in and out here. Knight of Rods is in and out, in and out for you in uh, October. I feel like the Knight of Rods is like stirring up the pot. They may be stirring up some consternation for you. They may be spilling their guts to you, talking to you about their problems. They may actually be eating up some of your finances. You may be having to support them in their school, their work, or if they got kicked out of their, you know, they moved out of their love partner, you know, they were together. But like, and I feel that you wish that they would solve some of their own problems wish that they wouldn't have such be such a financial drain to you or an emotional drain. I do feel that you care about them and you love them. I'm, I'm not feeling you don't. I'm not feeling like you don't care or love them, but I feel like you wish they would change, get their act together, not burden you so much, stop having so much back and forth energy, not bringing in all this drama. Now, who is this to you, Libra? I, I don't know because I get it in a couple different scenarios, but it's somebody that's very close to you, probably related, either a family member, like a son or a daughter, 
a grandson or a granddaughter, a sibling, or it could be a love partner to you. It's somebody close to you, even a parent maybe, uh, but they're draining you and they're stirring up the pot. And you may feel like you're not on the same page with them this month. You may feel like your agendas and what you're thinking about and what they're thinking about and their agendas are at cross purposes with each other in October. I feel like you're looking at them like this Knight of Rods is having difficulty in coping with their reality. And you may agree with them. I'm not saying you disagree with that, but I feel like you don't want their issues and problems and burdens to become yours because I feel like you feel that is what is happening or has been happening. And you may feel like this is one of the per people that like doesn't respect you or talks down to you at times. They could be one of the people you have that feeling about. So now your last card here for October is two of rods. This is partnership in business or partnership in uh, love. It could also be something you're doing or creating and putting out there in the world uh, for the public view or for, you know, something you're creating that you want to get out there. You've second guessed yourself too much. Uh, even when you're really decision and firm, you second guess yourself too much. Now, I have two relatives. My father was one of them. He's deceased, who is a Libra. And I know Libras like balance and fair, but sometimes I think Libras may get wishy-washy about sticking to their guns and making a decision. Sometimes, but it depends on all the other things going on in your chart. And here, you know, what? where's your moon? Where's your rising? Uh, you know, uh, where's Mercury for you and Mars? Like th those things, all these things add up. It's not just based solely on your sun sign, but here... I feel like you may have a tendency to talk yourself out of things and I feel or, or making a decision and acting like you're firm and then turning around and going up and reversing it. I feel that may be something that you've done or you may be feeling like that. That may be what's happening for you in October. And I feel like you may have had a history in this lifetime of getting intertwined with people that make you second guess yourself or your decisions. And I feel like this is part of your karmic journey as a Libra. Because I feel like you figure people out and then they disappoint you. And you help people out and then they disappoint you. I feel you've had this a lot. And I feel that you do have certain ideals and standards that you believe in and that you want to uphold. And I feel you get very disappointed with people that don't live up to or measure up to the standards that you have and believe in. I feel like you get disappointed by people a lot because they don't, um, they don't measure up or they don't aspire measure up to your standards. I feel like there's some things, Libra, that you're thinking about strongly, very analytical of you in October. And I feel that some of what you're analyzing is what can I change or what can change to improve my life or to improve my situation and make things better. But I feel you do have a sense of fear and worry that if you take some kind of risk or chance or gamble or big step to make certain changes, that you're afraid that the house of cards that you're living in is going to fall. And you don't really want, it's like, you know, like what's that game, Jenga? You know, when you pull out the wooden pieces and like, it's always like a risk, like if I pull out this piece, is that tower all going to fall? I feel like you're like playing a game of Jenga. Like what can I, what move or step can I make? What change or thing can I do? And keep a lot of what I hold dear or is important to me intact without having a house of cards falling. So you had some unusual messages this month, Libra. I hope this reading was of help to you and I hope it made sense. I want to thank you so much, as always. Thank you so much for watching. 
And please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell when you do subscribe if you would like to get notified when I upload my videos here to YouTube. And if you would like to get any of the special videos I record for Vimeo, those links are posted below this video and are also found on my website, www.theluckymermaid.com. Click on the videos tab on my menu and there you will see all the video series listed. You just go to the heading you want of the, of the video series you're interested in, click on your sign, and it will take you to that video on Vimeo for download and purchase. Now, some of the links below, one is for the October 2019 Psychic Crystal Reading, where I look into my crystal and give you additional messages and predictions from my spirit guides for your sign for the month of October 2019. The other newer video series that's listed below, the link below is for the Horseshoe Tarot Spread, seven card spread, which is focusing on one or more important themes or people or both going on in your life and giving you the hidden messages, the outside influences, what's going on in the present, what the outcome is gonna be, so you might want to check those videos out as well. And there's probably a couple other links below you might want to check out. Also, if you would like to get more predictions and messages from my spirit guides through me that you're not going to see here on YouTube, you can visit my social media pages, The Lucky Mermaid LLC on Facebook, The Psychic Pastry Chef LLC on Facebook, and also my Instagram page, the lucky mermaid underscore Pam Georgell. On those places, I pull tarot cards, oracle cards, angel cards, animal oracle cards, uh, sacred geometry cards, mermaid cards. I use the crystal. Uh, I may even use the gemstone crystals at some times and give you predictions from them. So you never know what predictions and messages are going to be there. So please be sure to check them out. Many people find those messages are resonating with them. And those predictions are not just for the day I post the prediction and message. Many times they cover four to six weeks, a couple of months, six to nine months, the next week. You just never know what is going to come up and what messages and what timing is connected to those messages. Also, if you're interested in watching some interesting baking, cake making, pastry making, and decorating, and getting psychic predictions here on my channel, you can watch my episodes of The Psychic Pastry Chef, where I combine my 22 years of experience as a pastry chef with my 18 years of experience as a psychic and combine them together and make cakes and pastries and decorate them and put them together and give you predictions for your zodiac sign while doing so. So I surely hope you check that out on my channel as well. And Libra, if you would like to see what gemstone crystal my spirit guides are going to say is the best gemstone crystal for you to work with with your frequencies, energy and vibrations this month of October 2019, you can look for these videos on my channel. Uh, I'm doing them separately for now. I don't know. I may put them back into the Psychic Tarot readings, but they were pretty long. So please look for your gemstone crystal reading uh, for what's the best gemstone for you for October 2019. So I hope you have an absolutely outstanding month of October, Libra. And no that I wish you many blessings and peace.